My research now is about uh, world cities, and in fact, four of the largest cities among the wealthiest nations in the world. This one, New York City, Paris, London, and Tokyo. Um, those are the areas in which I do my research, I should say. The broader themes of the research involve health systems and population health. There's a big literature uh, on health systems in very wealthy nations, uh, which focused in, uh, historically on public expenditure. And that research has yielded all kinds of interesting findings, such as the fact that we spend more money on health care than any of the other countries of OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Uh, it has yielded uh, findings that are now well known to newspaper readers, that the infant mortality in the United States is much higher than that of other wealthy nations, uh, that life expectancy at birth in the United States is much lower than in other nations. Uh, but that research, in my judgment, has reached diminishing returns, largely because the variations within nations are sometimes larger uh, than the variation between nations. And what does it mean to talk about the U.S. health system when it's so different in California, in New York, when it's so different within one zip code in New York to another zip code in New York in terms of the access that uh, residents have to health services and also in terms of their population health. So I thought it might make more sense to compare health policy, health systems, and population health across cities. So I started thinking, here's a great big black box. There's a gap, an academic stream. And we can try to fill that gap by really comparing systematically these cities and seeing how their population health compares and how their health systems compare. And to the extent that we can, try to separate out the impact of, uh, uh, of a health system on health. We, we, we've looked at uh, measures of health status across all four cities. And on measures of life expectancy at birth, for example, uh, we have the lowest life expectancy at birth in New York City and Manhattan uh, compared to the other four cities. Um, in terms of infant mortality, uh, we have the highest infant mortality rates uh, in New York City and Manhattan compared to the other three cities. With respect to avoidable hospitalization, this is an area in which there's been a lot of work done by my colleague John Billings here at the Wagner School uh, in looking at ambulatory care sensitive conditions across zip codes. And it's very well known that the variations are enormous in the admissions for conditions for which one should not be admitted if one receives proper primary care. We, looked, we took this indicator, uh, developed by Joel Weissman, actually, the measure, um, and we looked at avoidable hospital admissions in the UK, in, in England and Wales, and in France, and we found that the avoidable hospital admissions were much higher in the US than the UK, a little bit higher in London than in, in inner London than in Manhattan, and far lower in France and in Paris. This suggests that countries like France, which have national health insurance, which have a large share of primary care doctors, which have relatively few financial barriers to access, are doing pretty well with respect to keeping down hospitalizations that should not occur. Final indicator that we looked at most recently in a paper we published in the European Journal of Public Health was avoidable mortality. Uh, avoidable mortality is a measure of the number of people who die from a certain number of conditions for which they really shouldn't have to die if they get proper medical care and preventive care. Uh, various kinds of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and we found that rates of avoidable mortality were considerably higher in Manhattan and New York City, which suggests, again, uh, that it's not just the population, 
but that it's the health system in the broadest sense, not just hospital care, but also clinical prevention and primary care, which could be performing better to reduce our rates of avoidable mortality.